So as the word equilibrium suggests, there will be a reversible arrow sign in the equation because the reaction will not go to 100% completion. So this means that we will be focusing more on weak acids and weak bases because they will only ionize partially in water. In essence, this whole chapter can be broken down into 7 distinct parts, namely 3 theories of acids and bases, conjugate acid-base pairs and formulas, pH calculations for strong acids and strong bases, pH calculations for weak acids and weak bases, salt hydrolysis, buffer solutions, and lastly, acid-base titration curves. The more important parts that the A-levels will focus on are these four big sections. And there is a combination of theory and lots of calculations that we need to master. But not to worry because we will first learn about how people in the past came up with three theories to define what is truly an acid or a base. We may think that an acid is something that just produces hydrogen ions, while a base is something that just produces hydroxide ions when both are dissolved in water. This is also known as the Arrhenius theory or definition of acids and bases. However, this theory by Arrhenius is not perfect as there are limitations to it. That's because it cannot explain the basic properties of other substances such as ammonia. Hence, new definitions were introduced to build on the current definition so that it covers a greater scope to define what is an acid or a base. So the important points to take note of are knowing the definitions and limitations of each of the three definitions of acids and bases. With that, let's now dive into understanding conjugate acid-base pairs. According to the bronsted lowry definition, when an acid reacts with a base, the acid donates a hydrogen ion, aka a proton, to the base, forming A-, which becomes a base, and HB+, which becomes an acid. But to be more precise, A- is the conjugate base of the HA acid, while the HB+, is the conjugate acid of the B base. Hence, forming two conjugate acid-base pairs. Using this concept, we will need to learn and apply these formulas. Ka, Kb, and Kw are basically equilibrium constants, where Ka is the acid dissociation constant, Kb is the base dissociation constant, and Kw is the ionic product of water, as shown by this formula. But don't worry about this right now as I'll be covering this in depth, so do stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Next, we will learn how to calculate the pH of strong acids by using the formula pH equals to negative log concentration of H+, and using 14 minus pOH to find the pH of strong bases. However, when it comes to calculating the pH of weak acids and weak bases, things are not so straightforward. That's because weak acids and bases only ionize partially in water. So the H plus here in the formula reflects the amount of ionized H plus and not the amount of hydrogen present in the acid molecule before it is dissolved in water. Hence, we need to find the actual amount of H plus that is ionized by using a method called the ice table. Uh, not this ice. This looks more like it. This method is also typically used for other reversible reactions that have an equilibrium established. Then, from the ice table, we can equate the amount present at equilibrium to the Ka or the acid dissociation constant and find the concentration of ionized H+, then use the formula to find the pH. Likewise, the same method applies to find the pH of bases. Just that we need to take one more step to subtract pOH from 14. So as we know, one of the byproducts of an acid-base reaction will be a salt. There are four kinds of salt that can be produced, namely from the neutralization between a strong acid and a strong base, which gives a neutral salt of pH 7, between a strong acid and a weak base, which gives an acidic salt, between weak acid and a strong base, which gives an alkaline salt, and lastly, between a weak acid and a weak base, which we can't really tell and will need a pH meter to help us out in determining the exact pH of the salt. The reason why some salts are acidic or alkaline can be explained by a process called salt hydrolysis. For example, when a strong acid reacts with a weak base, the conjugate acid of the weak base will react with water, aka hydrolyze in water to produce hydroxodium ions, which causes the pH of the salt to be below 7, hence making it acidic. So the important things that you will need to take note of are number 1. How to explain salt hydrolysis for both acidic and alkaline salts Number 2. Knowing how to write the equations to illustrate salt hydrolysis And number 3. Knowing how to calculate the pH of acidic or alkaline salts using the ice table Ka, Kb, and Kw 
Don't worry about the calculations just yet because I'll be teaching you the foolproof method to do this in my upcoming video. Next, we will learn about buffer solutions, which basically helps a solution to maintain its pH when a small amount of acid or base is added to the solution. There are two types of buffer solutions, acidic and alkaline buffers. But it doesn't really matter because both of them still serve the exact same purpose. The magic of buffer solutions are made possible by having a mixture of a large reservoir of weak acid or weak base with a large reservoir of its salt. So if a small amount of acid is added to an alkaline buffer for example, the large reservoir of the unionized basic molecules will react with the acid and remove it from the system. And if a small amount of base is added to the same alkaline buffer, the large reservoir of its salt ions will react with the base and remove it from the system. Hence, keeping the pH of the solution relatively constant. So the important things that you should take note of are Number 1. When you're explaining how a buffer solution works, you need to write both scenarios when a small amount of acid is added and when a small amount of base is added. This is to show that the buffer can buffer against any substance regardless if it's acidic or alkaline to maintain the pH of a solution. Number 2. You must know how to calculate the pH of buffer solutions using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And take note, this equation only applies to buffer solutions. So don't use this equation on questions like finding out the pH of a weak base, etc. Combining everything that we have covered so far, we can illustrate all the combinations of weak, strong, acid-base reactions with 5 types of acid-base titration curves. More importantly, we need to know how to calculate the pH at these 4 specific points of the titration curves, especially for these two curves with one of the species being either a weak acid or a weak base. The reason why I said that it's a combination of everything that we've covered is because we will be using the earlier parts of the chapter to calculate the pH at these 4 specific parts of the curve, which are number 1, the initial pH, which can be calculated using the formula pH equals to negative log concentration of H plus for strong acids or using the ice table for weak acids. Number 2, specifically for these two types of titration curves, this region is the buffer region as it has a combination of the weak acid or weak base and its salt. Hence, we will use the henderson hasselbalch equation to find the pH in the region as it is a buffer solution. Number 3, the equivalence point, which can be calculated by using salt hydrolysis to find the pH of the acidic or alkaline salt. And number 4, lastly, the final pH of the solution which is in the region after the equivalence point. And ladies and gentlemen, that's acid-base equilibra summarized and explained so you don't have to.